Welcome back to the North Tonawanda Football Hall of Fame YouTube channel. I'm Ed Holinsky. We have another special guest. This one from the Louport area back in the mid-70s, maybe the early 70s, depending on how you want to look at it. Via San Diego now these days, Alfredo Rosas Davis. Al Davis, how are you there, my friend? I'm doing fine. Thank you. Thank you so much for reaching out to me a couple of weeks ago. Uh, you heard about our YouTube channel, and uh, you were looking for the mysterious 1973 Luport versus NT game that, unfortunately, we don't have at this time. Maybe if the Rayo family might have it, we may be, may be able to put it up on YouTube. But in our conversation on the phone, you have quite the story. And I'd like you to share that with our, our viewers and our listeners here today. Well, basically, uh, I, we moved from California back in 1970, December 1970. And uh, I was a track and field guy in the in a border town named Calexico, where I was able to uh, compete in, uh, across the border into Mexico, where I uh, I went to the Junior Olympics and uh, won second place. So when I arrived at Luport, um, I didn't know anything about football. I didn't know anything about wrestling or anything else, uh, uh, any other sport. They, they, they didn't, where I went to school, they didn't provide that kind of sport. So Coach Rayo uh, took me aside and he, he gave me the bad news that basically that javelin throwing, which was my sport, was a college level uh, sport. So I couldn't, I couldn't do it uh, at, the, at, at, at the high school level. So he said, but he'll uh, be more than happy to teach me uh, wrestling football, or even maybe shot put. And I was only 138 pounds. So I said, okay, <laughs> not a problem. I'll do that. So um, I, was, uh, I was lucky enough to, uh, I, the coaching was very patient with me. And they uh, taught me um, how to even put the, the, the pads uh, of football. Uh, I didn't even know that there were there were pockets there to put the pads. And uh, Tom Blinko was the, the lucky guy that taught me how to put those uh, pads into a pocket in my knees and my wrist and my waist and, and all that. So um, I got to meet a lot of the uh, good players. Uh, uh, and I, I, there's a lot of them, but I'll mention a few. Butch Dillon, Kurt Meckes, Rich Meckes, uh, Don Marinucci, and uh, so uh, the first year of football in freshman, uh, I was mostly learning the, the game. I, I got to play once in a while. But uh, then after that, uh, Coach uh, Rayo uh, asked me to go wrestling. I was lucky enough to made it into the uh, varsity uh, squad. And, uh, and I got the, uh, the most improved wrestler, you know. Uh, not bad for a guy that didn't know how to <laughs> how to uh, do anything like that. So uh, after that, uh, the coach uh, uh, taught me how to throw the shot put, and my main uh, coach was uh, 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 Coach Query, and uh, and he uh, helped me basically how to throw the shot put. In uh, one of the situations, uh, I was throwing against guys that were 100, like 100 pounds bigger than I was, and I was beating them. So the whole team was amazed at that. And the, the whole team asked the coach uh, as to how can Al beat these guys that were 250 pounds. And the coach addressed the team, and he said, Al has finesse, you know, poetry in motion. <laughs> so I was able to establish the uh, uh, for a freshman in competition a loophole record. I don't know if it still stands, but uh, it, uh, it it was a thrill for me to be throwing a heavy ball and, and winning. You know, so and after that uh, I was invited to go to the uh, uh, to the varsity camp where I met a lot of the the uh, big guys and you know the two years ahead of me uh 
and uh, I was able to go and practice and learn more football. And then after the camp, Coach uh, Rayo told me, Al, uh, I think you need to go and play JV because you're not going to make it. <laughs> so, okay, Coach, uh, not a problem. If you stay in varsity, you're not going to play. Okay, we got too much talent here. So they may, may be able to use you in, uh, in, in JV. So I said, fine. Um, so Coach Query, which was the uh, defensive coach, uh, uh, asked me if I could try playing defensive end. So I tried defensive end, and uh, apparently I was, uh, was kind of crazy uh, trying to tackle big guys. So I found a way to do that. And the coach uh, basically um, was happy with me and made me a starter. Uh, I, was, I was very proud to be in the first JV unbeaten, the first JV unbeaten team for Luport. Uh, not only being in that squad, but also by uh, leading the team in tackles, uh, leading the team in uh, fumble recoveries, and I had a uh, block punt. So I, I was very thrilled, not so much on winning, but to participate for representing my school, which I was used to in California because in California I was representing a whole town to a whole nation, you know. So that, that to me that that was that was uh, sacred. Um, Al, I got to uh, ask you something. How was the culture shock coming from California to upstate New York or Western New York <laughs> in the seventies? I, I, I went. From one extreme to another extreme, having temperatures over 120 degrees um, to a, 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 to a, a climate where it uh, is super cold, and um, I had to adjust really quick. I, I was cold all the time, and, uh, but I loved it. Uh, I used to spend a lot of time going to, uh, to uh, Old Fort Niagara and pick up little rocks. Rocks. They had little rocks, uh, color rocks, and everything. But the, the the weather was the it was it was hard for me because I was used to more of the heat, where I was getting humidity, which I'm not used to. Here in California, even here in San Diego, is very dry, and it could be 120 degrees. But if you're in the shade, you're okay, not a problem. But the humidity. It's, it's, it's just, it kills you. <laughs> it, it, was, it was hard for me because I was not used to the humidity. So in New York, it was very humid at 80 degrees. I mean, it'll wear you down quick. So how were you accepted by your teammates at, at, at Luport, whether on the varsity or the wrestling team or the football team or the track team? Uh, if I understood your question, because I can hardly hear you, I, I think uh, if you're asking me, if, if, if how were you if, accepted? If like how were you accepted by your teammates? At first, um, uh, the, the, the the you know everybody was they tried to they tried to intimidate me, and uh, they tried to uh, see what I was about. Let me give you a little a little thing that you're gonna think is kind of funny. When I first arrived at Luport, everybody wanted to arm wrestle me. I don't know why. Maybe because I was kind of buffed from the sports that I did uh, in Mexico. But everybody wanted, and I beat everybody, so I, I was happy about that. Except I got challenged by a person by the name of Tom Blinko. <laughs> Tom Blinko, the only one that beat me at arm wrestling. So, but once I established that I was, I was a, a good player, I was a good kid, I, I had good character, everybody, everybody embraced me. Everybody liked me, and, uh, and I, I was accepted really, really quick. But at the beginning, it was... What, yeah, do, you remember it, about it was Coach, what do you remember about Coach Rayo? Uh, Rayo used to say, uh, as a competitor... As a competitor, uh, Coach Rayo used to tell us, nice guys never win. And I think uh, what he meant was, don't be shy to be aggressive. So uh, we were, we were, we, we learned from that. We, we were eager 
to meet the challenge. Um, I remember when I, we, we talked uh, uh, earlier, uh, you asked me about uh, the NFL. Uh, the Niagara Frontier League, I think is what it's called. Yes. And uh, the, the coach had us ready for all those games, playing against NT, huge school, 4A school versus a 2A school. Tonawanda, Kenmore East, Kenmore West, Niagara Falls, LaSalle, Lock, Lockport, and Niagara Wheatfield. Those schools were huge to us. And uh, we were, we were uh, as the coach said, we got everything to win, nothing to lose, because we were expected to lose against them. But if we win, you know, that's the, that's, that's the way he liked it, because coach always prepared us to win, and we won. Uh, in the three years of football, uh, I only lost two games. Uh, freshman, we lost one game against Niagara Weedfield. And, of course, in JV, we didn't lose any uh, against the same schools that I mentioned. And in, uh, in, uh, in my, my only varsity uh, season before coming back to California, um, I, uh, that was a, the 72-73 season, and uh, I think I remember well. Yeah, and uh, that year, the coach uh, told us at the end of the season, he wrote on a piece of paper saying, I ex uh, th on this paper right here, this is what I expected from you guys. And he put a four in uh, three, I believe, in one. That would eight, it'll be eight games. And you guys gave me much better. I'm proud of you. We were five, one, and two co-champions. So we were champions. Uh, the coaching that we, we had, uh, starting with Coach Rail, uh, was, was a, a coach that liked to win all the time. And, uh, and uh, we were second to none as he prepared us. We didn't like to lose. So, but it was, when we lost, it, it was okay because we got something out of it, recover, shake your pants, go back out again and, and do your thing. Win this time. What do you remember in the games against North Tonawanda? The, the, uh, in, in, North Tonawanda had... Huge guys. I mean, you're talking about skyscrapers. I mean, those guys were huge, taller than us, and heavier than us. So one of the, the things that coach expected from us at the beginning is, first, no fear. It didn't matter how big they are. Uh, speed. Go around them. You can beat them with speed. Uh, commitment. No excuses. Uh, maintain the focus and practice, practice, practice. That basically built the confidence for us and we knew we could take them. We knew we can beat North Tonawanda. And I was happy to say that, uh, of course, in uh, a freshman, I don't remember if we played uh, North, Tonawanda, North Tonawanda, but uh, I think we did and, and we, of course, we won. We only lost one game. Uh, in JV, we beat them. Uh, I believe it was like eight to seven. And in varsity, it was 0-0. Zero, zero. That was one of the ties that we had. Uh, it was North Tonawanda and Kenmore West. So playing North Tonawanda, it was a challenge. Uh, I learned being only 138 pounds, 145 at the most. Uh, I learned to go around people and, uh, and just look for the ball. Don't look for the blocker in front of me. And, uh, but it was fun after the game. Uh, we had the courtesies to at least uh, shake hands and walk away, you know, and, 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 and it built respect. I mean, everything was for fun. But I, I like playing big schools, <laughs> especially I, when they were bigger than me. I see in the, in the background you have some of your Luport memorabilia. And I'm sure you, yeah. after we talked on the phone, you probably went back to, to your scrapbook to see exactly what you had left. When you look back at that, what type of memories come to mind about your high school days at Newport? 
I w I'm very proud, first of all, of the accomplishments that I incurred. I, I of course, uh, it, it, all the all the sports that I did, it was a team sport, and I I, I could say that I I didn't do it by myself. I always had the support of my teammates to make me a better uh, sports person. So I don't care if I was doing football, wrestling, uh, uh, or throwing the shot put, you know, it's just like the, the coach said, practice, practice, practice. And hopefully all that practice that I did helped the, the rest of the team also do the same thing. Because if they saw Al doing this, maybe they also would do it. Uh, uh, but uh, but I, I remember uh, the winning and the losses. And in wrestling, of course, uh, I, I had plenty of losses. But uh, I, was, I was decorated, as the, uh, once again, as I mentioned, the most improved wrestler. I had a few records that I established. And uh, that's one of the things that uh, I can share with my family and tell them that, uh, you know, I, I, was, I, I was okay. I, I did well in, 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 a, in a good school, in, in a good district where we had good, good competition. And this competition always were ready for us. They, 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 they didn't take us lightly because they knew we were coming to win. Outside of sports, what do you remember from your Newport High School days? Um, so many things. Uh, the location, the location where, where we, my dad was in the Border Patrol. So we got to travel throughout the United States. And uh, when he got promoted uh, to go to uh, New York, um, there's so much history. Uh, in, in uh, New York with the, with the French, with the, with the Indians, with the Canadians and uh, in uh, the different diversities that we had, we had a lot of uh, uh, people from different uh, uh, ethnicities. Uh, and, and, the, and the thing that I, it, it was kind of uh, um, puzzling for me that uh, everybody's wearing, um, a T-shirt with American something, you know, uh, Polish American, Italian American, Armenian American. Where in California we just did American. <laughs> we, we we were not doing into you know different things in, in in New York. It was I think there was more there was more diversity in in uh, in New York. So I think that's the thing that I remember the most. There were wonderful people. They were they were friendly. They were nice to me. I, I loved it. I learned a lot. But uh, that's the thing that really um, uh, probably thought of was kind of a um, different from from California. But uh, the, the people were, were great, and that's what I remember the most: the people, the location, secondary, where there was a lot of history, and. Uh, and uh, um, in the proximity to Canada, I went from uh, one border town to another border town. Uh, I met a few Canadians, and it was they were nice, nicest people you want to meet. They were friendly. Um, one thing about I remember about Canada is that if 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 they see a piece of paper in the street, they go and pick it up and put it in the trash. Of course, you didn't see that in Buffalo or. Niagara Falls. I mean, <laughs> that's the thing that uh, that uh, that was kind of kind of made me mad about that. But uh, but it's okay. How but so other than that, it, go ahead. No, finish your statement. No, no, other than that, everything everything was was nice. I met a lot of friends from other schools. Um, uh, whoever I wrestled against or I played against, I made friends from other schools. Um, I believe uh, NT, when I wrestled uh, a person from NT, I think that the guy that I wrestled and beat me <laughs> is, uh, his name was Carlson, I believe. Uh, I, I don't remember uh, his name, but uh, they, they, were, they were not, they were not as, uh, 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 as 
angry as I would thought they would be. In California, we it's a fast-paced state where if you're lucky, if you see your neighbor and say hi, you wave at them, and that, that's it. Uh, everything is so fast. Where in, in New York, everybody just wanted to meet you. They wanted to see you. They want to ask you questions. They want to know all about you. The Niagara Frontier League, wrestling-wise, had a lot of good teams, and the competition was very intense. Talk about the, the, the intensity of some of those, those matches against some of those schools. Well, um, once again, uh, it was us against them. Uh, and them, you talk, you're talking about the same school I just mentioned. And when you get to the sectionals, then other schools come into the picture, like Sweet Home uh, and uh, Albion and Grand Island, and which I we never competed against. And they were good. Uh, I mean, I was never a wrestler, but I learned to be. And even though I might have lost against them, but they made me a better a better wrestler, a better shot putter, a better football player, you know? So yes, the competition was tough. We, the coach had to go to extra length. He used to tell us, uh, Coach Roy, you said, you know, uh, they have uh, these, these, these uh, um, uh, practice, where you pound the, the 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 equipment, but they got they got your picture, they know who you are, and uh, so those teams are after you. They they want you. They want to take something away from you. So we were really up for get, all those games. We 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 respected them. We really uh, wanted them to know that we were somebody. Being a small school. Um, we wanted to, to say to them basically that we, we were uh, a team to be reckoned with. You know, we, we may lose against you, but at least we're going we're gonna to give you a tough time, you know, uh, during that thing. If we were lucky enough, we might even beat you, you know. I think the, the first, uh, the second year of, of wrestling, we went 10 10 matches, 10, uh, 10 uh, schools in a row, and we beat them all, 10 in a row, until uh, we met, uh, I believe, I think it was Kenmore East. Kenmore East beat us for the first time. They bursted our bubble, as the newspaper clipping said. And uh, and after that, we had Niagara Wheatfield. <laughs> they were the the icon of wrestling in, in Western uh, New York. So uh, the competition was tough and, and we were ready for it, thanks to the coach. The coach lived in the, in, in, in the Buffalo area. So I think he had reasons as to why he wanted us to win because more than likely he knew all these coaches and he wanted to show them that uh, that he get he had good players. Yeah. How sad was it when for when your father was your family was transferred out of uh, Western New York? How sad was it for you? I was devastated in the sense that uh, I was a starting uh, defensive end uh, going into uh, what it. What it eventually was the best Lupor team ever, uh, the best defense. They were eight and zero. They uh, the 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 team was like I believe it was ranked after that after in that season like uh, like fourth or fifth in the state. You know, I mean, <laughs> I, I was not happy leaving. Uh, but, uh, but I, I, like I mentioned to my friends, um, uh, it was bittersweet because I had to leave my friends. I had to leave my school. I had to leave my sports, but I was leaving home to, to go back home, California, to go back, uh, and celebrate my dad's promotion in California 
And uh, basically after that, I never, uh, I never participated anymore in, in sports. After that, I basically hit the books and, uh, and became an honor student, which uh, I was happy about that. I didn't know what that was until then. <laughs> so I, I think I had something here. Uh, which uh, I didn't think I had in Newport, but uh, but uh, yeah, it, it was hard. It, it, it was difficult. Uh, uh, basically, I consider myself more when I see people. Uh, I I consider more uh, being from New York than being from California. You have the opportunity right now to say something to your former teammates and classmates from Newport. What would you want to tell them? Um, that, uh, I wished I could have, uh, uh, you know, when you sign your yearbook at the end of the, uh, of the year, you're saying goodbye to everybody and, or whatever, so long. I wish I've, I could have said to every single one, even the ones that I didn't frequent, uh, uh, to say at least that, uh, they were special to me, that I'm part of, I'm part of them. Uh, they made me what, what I am today. Um, and I wish I could have spent more time uh, with them. Um, uh, and uh, they, they were very, very special people, some of them, the ones that I, I, I had the chance to, to, to uh, be a, around with. We had a lot of stories. We had a lot of fun things that we did. And some stupid things we did too. So, but uh, but it was it was it was uh, it was interesting for me. Uh, not being from uh, New York, I learned a lot. I, I was like on on second gear every time because uh, I, I not only was oh, another thing is I was um, I, I was bilingual, but I was more uh, uh, more into Spanish than, than than English. So I had to learn the language real quick. So uh, when I first started playing football and they told me uh, you should join the, uh, the, the, the defense, uh, you, you can tackle somebody. And uh, when you tackle, you bring them down. And I said to him, oh, you, you got to tackle them? Uh, no, no, tackle, not tackle, tackle them. <laughs> so to me, it was like, a, it was like le learning how to be in a different world, you know. Uh, but uh, it, it was fun, and uh, I didn't take things. Uh, I was not very sensitive to to whenever they made fun of me and all that stuff. To me, I just laughed with them. Uh, one of the things that uh, uh, my ethnicity always say, you know, it is fun when you laugh about yourself, you know, than laugh, uh, 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 you know, of other people. Don't make fun of other people. Make fun of yourself. That comes, it's more fun that way. It's more, it's funnier that way when you laugh about yourself. Do you ever look back after all these years and say, boy, that was fun? And do you have any regrets? Uh, I'm sorry, repeat that again? When you look back at those days, what, what comes to mind? And do you have any have any regrets about anything back from back then? Overall, I don't have any regrets. Um, I think uh, um, the people that I've my circle of people that I frequented were very special to me. They 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 embraced the type of person that I was. Um, and uh, I wish I basically, the, if you want to say a regret, uh, I wish I could have spent more time with them and, and listened to them more uh, when they needed somebody. Um, but uh, we, 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 I, I, I think, uh, I think I really, I felt like I was on fast mode because I knew someday my dad was going to get transferred. So I was going uh, on fifth speed all the time and uh, in a hurry to get things done. And unfortunately, I could not finish 
uh, my schooling uh, in Newport. I wish I could have, that's the only regret I would say that I would have is that uh, I did not graduate from Newport back in 1975. You, you talked about that you, you uh, did not play sports your senior year of high school once you moved back to California. Did you have any withdrawal about not playing athletics, not going to practice, not being with the guys, not competing? Um, I was antsy about – I wanted to join the track team um, and throw the shot put, but uh, – my grace became uh, more important, okay. more important to me. I did join, I must admit it, I did join the football team. Uh, and uh, I didn't like the concept of, of playing that they had at that school. Um, they had kids with a lot of talent and they were they relied on those people instead of a team concept. Where in Luport, we were a team, and uh, we would swarm all together to get the person with the ball. Uh, and uh, in California, when I went back, everybody, certain people were like heroes, and I didn't like that because I didn't I I I, I was not used to. Uh, relying on somebody's uh, reputation, I was, I was more into a, 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 a team concept, as I mentioned before. I wanted to play and win a, uh, as a team, uh, like Luport was. So, are you saying that you got spoiled at Luport? Um, c- coach was tough, but uh, I would say uh, yes. Uh, the the coach would, even when he was, one time he caught us, he, he told us to do 15 stairs. And some of the, the uh, wrestlers were not doing it. And, and they convinced me not to do it with them. And the, co- the, the coach caught us. And uh, so he let us have it. You know, he, we did 30 after that. But the thing is, I felt okay doing that because, because um, he's put, he was putting attention to us. He was telling me to do it. He, he cared. To me, that's when you care. It's like your, your mom and dad, when they stop yelling at you, correcting you, and doing things, that's when you know that uh, they don't care anymore. And the coach, as long as he's, he's – He's uh, um, giving us some guidance. I, I was okay with that. I, I could handle that, even though 15 stairs or even 30 stairs were, were tough. Alfredo Rojas Davis, this has been a lot of fun. We're over 30 minutes right now with this, my friend. Uh, thank you so much for sharing this information with you and your stories. Uh, your, your old friends from Newport will recognize you and probably reach out to you. I want to thank you so much for joining me here on the North Tonawana Football Hall of Fame YouTube channel. I want to thank you for reaching out to me blindly on a, on a cell phone telephone call. And uh, one of these days, we're going to get those tapes from the Rail Brothers and the Rail Home, and it's going to be that 1973 North Tonawana Luport game. I hope so. Alfredo, thank you so much. I wish you well. Be well and take care of yourself. You do the same. Thank you very much. I enjoy this, and I hopefully that uh, um, uh, some of you, uh, my friends, uh, get to see this, and uh, and also my competitors, because they will remember, and uh, and, and and they they they'll 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 know that uh, we were okay at that time. You know, we we did well. We were we were good people, and we competed, and we did it for fun. We did it for our school. And that's the important thing at that time. It did. Alfredo, thank you so much.